Are most people here because they have trouble installing WordPress? Or just you guys? Okay, just you guys. Most people, I've, I've set it up probably about 10 times, I've never had a problem with setup. Versus Drupal took a lot of, of work to get going. So it is more amenable to beginners. Yeah? Um, I have a question. I've set it up on my yep. computer a while ago. Mm -hmm. Can I reset it up again? Yeah. Yeah. I should just do it again and forget that I've ever done it? Um, it depends. If you're talking about you set it up on a host, you probably want to make sure you have it cleared out if you want to set it up again. There's nothing stopping you from setting up multiple WordPress installations on a single site, um, which is another advantage of it, frankly, because you can have two different installations that run independent of one another. So th that's okay. Um, if, if you're saying you just lost track of it, it might be better to clean it up first before you install it. Uh, you'd have to um, go through your host. So you'd have to go through FTP, or you can call them and, and just say, I need to get rid of this one, and I want to start fresh, that sort of thing. It's a matter of deleting files. They're just a bunch of files within a folder. And are you also going to talk about, like, if you run a job where you're doing two different clients, mm -hmm. like how you keep track of two websites that you've done with WordPress? Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, we can talk about that. Let me say hand there. Let me go into the dashboard, and uh, I think a lot of these questions are driving into that. So, um, basically, when you have a um, installation of WordPress, you're going to have two um, ways of accessing it. You have the kind of the front end right of that equation, which is what people see, the end resulting website, and then you have the back end, which is how you control it. Okay. So this is an example of a site that's not really live. It's something we were toying with as a, as a place to put events up online. But this is a WordPress site that, that I built last week. And this would be the public facing uh, site. So someone can navigate a site. They could see uh, that there's links here. And they click on a particular link. And it takes them to a page, which may, may be a blog post. Maybe it's a, a resume, whatever it is, right? So not any different than any regular website, right? could have really been built anywhere um, as far as the end user goes. Now, for those of us who are using WordPress to actually build the site though, uh, where it really comes in handy and different is when we actually go into the back end part of it. So when, once WordPress is set up, or if it is already set up, we're going to access it through this admin panel, okay? And uh, you can usually get to that by just going to, let me zoom in here so we can see what we're doing. WP admin, okay, uh, wherever that installation is. Um, so here, my WordPress installation actually lives in that folder called edu. So your question about what if I have multiple installations on a single host, uh, whatever that first part is, that would be each installation. So I can have one installation that lives at edu, I can have another installation that lives at uh, documents or whatever it is, and then each one would live separately, and each one would be its own separate WordPress installation, but they run on the same on the same house. So I'm going to log in. I go here, and I get my admin panel. Yeah, question? I'm sorry. When you say installation, do you mean just separate blogs if we're talking about blogs? Is that what you're saying? Yep. In different, yeah, different copies of WordPress running at the same time. Yeah. And so, this is built with dot com or dot org? So this is my own self-hosted uh, okay. WordPress site. Okay, yeah. so dot org. Exactly. Great question. So when I set up WordPress, one of the first uh, steps when I install it is it actually asks me to set up an administrator uh, account. Okay. So the reason why that's important um, is that the admin access, right, to get to be able to go in and build things and upload things, right? I'm going to need to have administrator access. Okay. So it's important when you first set it up that you keep track of that name and that password. Um, if you put a valid email address in, you can always recover it. Uh, so it is good to, to use a real email address, which I found out the hard way uh, when I was messing around with one installation once. Um, but that admin panel, that admin account is going to give you full access uh, to uh, your WordPress installation. So when I log in, um, I'm just using the name and the password that I set it up with. It's going to show me basically everything uh, that belongs to this particular WordPress install. And this is called the dashboard, okay? So the dashboard is your landing page for when you actually um, log in to your account. The same site, okay? So if I go to this site, it's, the, it's exactly the same as this. This is just my administration panel. This is the site that I see because I control it, okay? The administration panel. So the dashboard is 
a landing place. It's also how you navigate the different areas of WordPress. So you navigate in a few different ways. You notice there's sort of this middle section here, right? And then we have a sidebar with um, additional links, additional sections, right? Now a couple of neat things about the dashboard, and this is kind of tips and tricks type thingy if you've already gotten to this point. Uh, a lot of people just don't even realize that you can do this, is that you can actually rearrange this. So you can drag and drop items. You have to make sure it has a place for it to live. There we go. So drag and drop, and I can reconfigure it. So I, I want this one to be over here. So if you kind of wanted to have a, a, a more customized to what you do um, feel, you can do that with the dashboard. You can also click on this thing up here at the top, the screen options. Uh, a lot of people don't know that too. I actually, I think I learned that by coming to a meetup like this and just overhearing it. So you learn things as you go. Uh, little check boxes so I can say, I don't want to see that. Um, and then it will basically hide it from there. I'm not a huge user of this area of the dashboard, but I know lots of people who go in and they update their blog once a day. One neat thing is uh, this quick press option. So you can actually put a post up. We're talking about that next. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. But if you do uh, do a lot of posting, it's kind of neat to be able to just go right in and do a post instantly and have it push out your, your blog. Yeah? The .edu directory has the different templates you have for your blogs. Could you, could you show where you would add additional templates and where it would be on the dashboard? Yeah. Oh, are you going to show yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything you say so far applies to both websites and blogs. Yes. Yeah, so in this sense, um, that's a great question. So, um, where you know, it's kind of a, to extrapolate. It's kind of like what is a blog and what's a website, and and it is kind of loose. I mean, when people talk about WordPress nowadays, they're not always talking about a blog. Uh, it does have really great blog functionality. Um, really, if you're looking at it from an organizational standpoint, and we'll we'll look at this next, is that a blog kind of updates more regularly. So, and that's really the, the only major difference functionally between a blog and a, and a web page. A website, you know, um, that's just a collection of pages, that, that those pages might not change all that much. You know, if you think about like a company website, I mean, my, uh, my consulting website doesn't have a blog as part of it because I don't change this stuff. You know, what I do, you know, the, the, the amount of skills I build do not change that often, unfortunately. <laughs> it doesn't change day to day. But if I have a site where I'm like, oh, well, once a week I want to post a new article about something cool in technology, that would be more like a blog. Um, but as far as the functionality of what that does, WordPress helps you out quite a bit. But when we say website, it kind of, uh, you know, you have to just kind of decide for yourself as far as what's a blog versus a website uh, in terms of how often you, you plan on using it. But WordPress does make a functional distinction between the two because there's two uh, types of content that you can add to your WordPress site. There's a post and there's a page. And those are kind of these two major categories of content that you build uh, within WordPress, okay? And to go back to that uh, kind of analogy, the post is something that is updated more regularly. You might post an article to your blog uh, once a week or once a day. Uh, a page might be changed more irregularly. Okay, so it doesn't mean you can't ever change it, but if you think about when you go to a website, it has an about page, right? About roughly doesn't change every day, right? It just says, this is what my company is, this is what the company does, yada, yada, yada. A blog might be more like news on that same site. Yeah, question. Okay, just sort of the format and, and the post what's in it. No. No, they're two distinct types of things, and we're gonna look at those next. So the, the, it'll make more sense. But I think you're thinking along the right lines. Yeah. Do people use WordPress when they're just building like a more static website? Have a lot of content management? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, well, any site is going to have content management, right? Because content management just simply means a way of organizing your stuff, right? So. <laughs> But do people use it for things other than the blogs? Absolutely. And that's one reason it's becoming more popular is because it's, it's being used beyond just a blogging system. It still has some blogging roots, I like to say, uh, which some people might disagree with. But um, you know that post thing, which I want to look at next, is kind of going to make that clear. So let's look at that. So let's say that um, on my site, I want to add uh, a new post, OK? Can you start down at like, if you just created this, you just use this FTP, 
different organization than, than what I was going for. I was doing post pages, then themes and plugins. Can I just say, yeah. the, you know, the, Steve already did a presentation of how to install the WordPress from yeah. scratch that's on oh, the website. Cool. Okay. Okay. Well, she's asking a little bit different, and maybe we could put it to a vote. You guys want are more interested in themes next or post and pages next? It's themes the, next? It should be the order that things happen. The order that things happen would be different depending on where you're at. Yeah, exactly yeah. your plan and questions after. Okay, good. I'll follow my plan. Question? No? Question? Is it possible to do all the questions to download so you can do your thing and do the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have plenty of time, so I'm not being thrown off at all. Um, if uh, you guys it's are concerned about it. Okay. I'd rather hear more of a chunk of what you're going to say. Good. So the chunks that we've done so far, um, talking about the difference between WordPress.org and WordPress.com, and it sounds like we're all good with that. The second thing we talked about was dashboard, and that's the area we're in now, um, but I'm wrapping that up. Other questions about the dashboard? The organization, I haven't seen what people are saying. If you don't start posting until you have your theme in place and laid out your page, I mean, that's a, that's a hierarchical structure of how okay. you have to get things done. Sure, cool. 